Welcome to my lesson on cell structure part one. In this lesson we're going to be looking at the structures of cells and the roles of these structures. Cells, the basic unit of life. Like houses are built up of individual bricks, organisms are made up of one or more cells. Some organisms are only made up of one cell, such as amoeba or yeast, but others, such as us, are made up of trillions of cells. Many of these cells are specialised and have particular jobs in the body, such as ciliated epithelial cells and goblet cells, which work together to help prevent dust and microbes from reaching the inside of your lungs. Cells contain smaller subcellular structures inside them, called organelles, which have their own particular roles inside the cell. We will learn more about these very soon. These organelles work together to allow the cell to function as a whole. Similar cells working together to carry out a particular function are called tissues. The example here is muscle tissue. A variety of tissues working together to carry out a function is called an organ, such as the stomach here. It is made up of secretory tissue, muscle tissue, mucosal tissue, epithelium, and various other tissues to pummel the food, start digestion, and form a liquid chyme. Various organs then come together to form an organ system, which carries out a large role in the body. For example, here the digestive system, which digests and absorbs food so that nutrients can be used by the body. These then build up into the overall organism. So let's break it back down into the individual cells. We need to look at the structure of typical plant and animal cells before we can go on to look at the more specialised cells. This is a diagram of a typical animal cell. As you can see, it has five main components, a nucleus, cell membrane, ribosomes, a cytoplasm, and mitochondrion. The cytoplasm makes up the bulk of the cell. It is jelly-like in structure and contains water, which allows substances such as nutrients and salts to dissolve in it and for chemical reactions to occur. It contains the organelles of the cell, the tiny structures that have specific jobs inside the cell to allow the cell to be alive. So, in an exam, when asked what the cytoplasm's role is, it is where the organelles are found and the cytochemical reactions. Now we move on to a relatively large organelle, the nucleus. This contains the genetic material, which is made up of long strands of DNA called chromosomes, carrying the genes. Your genes are what make you who you are. Genes code for proteins, and it is these proteins which control the activity of the cell. So in summary, the nucleus contains the genetic material and controls the activities of the cell. The chromosomes stay inside the nucleus, but the code on the genes can be copied and carried out of the nucleus for the proteins to be made by the ribosomes. These are the tiny organelles found in the cytoplasm of both plant and animal cells. Many of the proteins made by ribosomes are enzymes, which are very important for controlling chemical reactions inside the organism. So ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. The mitochondria, this is the plural name, one is called a mitochondrion, are sometimes called the powerhouse of the cell. Please do not write this down in an exam. This is not a scientific answer. The reason people sometimes say this is that the mitochondria are where most of the respiration occurs. If you think back to the eight characteristics of life and Mr. Schreng, one of the R's is for respiration. Respiration is the release of energy from food, most commonly from glucose. So, in an exam, if asked what the job of the mitochondria is, they are the site of respiration. Around the outside of the cell is the cell membrane. This is a thin layer made mainly of lipid. The membrane is partially permeable, which means only certain substances can move through. It can also actually control the passage of substances due to having special channels and pumps so it's known as selectively permeable. Therefore, the job of the cell membrane is to control what goes in and out of the cell. This is a photograph of how my own cheek cells looked when observing them down a light microscope with a magnification of times 400. You can clearly see the cell membrane, cytoplasm and the nucleus, but the mitochondria and ribosomes cannot be distinguished. So far, I have introduced you to structures that are found in both plant and animal cells. Plant cells, however, have additional structures and you also need to know the roles of these. These are the cell wall, the chloroplast and the vacuole. First of all, around the outside of the plant cell, you can see there is a cell wall. This is made up of long strands of a carbohydrate called cellulose, 
which allows substances to freely move through it, so it is therefore called fully permeable. This cellulose is a strong material which helps the cell keep its shape and helps support the plant. Many plants rely on water to keep the plant upright. You see this if you do not water a plant and it droops or wilts. When you water it, it stands upright again. This is because water moves into the cell, making the inside swell and push outwards, and the cell wall, being tough, resists this pressure and makes the plant cell firm, like a freshly inflated balloon. If there was no cell wall, the plant cell would burst instead. So the role of the cell wall is to provide support and shape. The permanent vacuole in the centre of the cell is surrounded by its own membrane. It is filled with cell sap, which stores sugars, minerals and other useful substances. It also helps to support the plant by swelling with water and pushing out against the cell wall. So in brief, the vacuole contains cell sap and helps with support. And last, but certainly not least, as most life relies on these, are the chloroplasts. These are green as they contain a green pigment called chlorophyll, which absorbs sunlight energy for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the way plants make their own food and carry out nutrition. They cannot eat their own food. Green plants are at the start of most food chains and we rely on them for food, so the chloroplasts are very important. In an exam, your answer to what is the role of the chloroplasts is that they are the site of photosynthesis. This is a photograph of a slide with onion epidermis cells, in other words, onion skin cells on it, when observing them down a light microscope at magnification of times 400. You can clearly see the cell wall with the cell membrane underneath, the large vacuole taking up most of the centre of the cell, the cytoplasm around the edges, and the nucleus, but again the mitochondria and ribosomes cannot be distinguished. There are no chloroplasts to be seen, as onion bulbs are found underground, where there is no light, so no photosynthesis can occur. We have now covered the structures common to plant and animal cells, which are the nucleus, which contains the DNA and controls the cell, the cell membrane, which controls what goes into and out of the cell, the ribosome, which is the site of protein synthesis, the cytoplasm, which contains dissolved nutrients and minerals and where many of the chemical reactions for the cell occurs, and the mitochondrion, the site of respiration. And then, of course, there are the additional structures, which are only found in plant cells. The chloroplasts, where photosynthesis occurs, the large permanent vacuole, which contains cell sap and helps with support, and the cellulose cell wall for support. That's the end of my lesson on cell structure. Hopefully you will join me for part two, which will be on the specialisation of cells and also stem cells.